this next high mileage Ram episode brought to you by Real Truck. If you don't mind, stick around to the end of the video. I've got some more information I want to share with you. It's cold. That's uh, snow on the bed cover. We'll see if that holds up. So I wanted to make a quick video and talk about whether or not the air ride can perform in extreme cold. That seems to be one of the fears. Uh, lots of people have commented on previous videos about the longevity and its inability to work in the cold weather. So I'm gonna go out on a limb here and I am going to test my air ride today. I don't have to, but I'm going to. And it is, no joke, negative six. That's probably backwards. Negative six degrees, that's ambient air temperature. And it's been below freezing for eight or nine days. Wind chill of negative 24 at the moment. I don't think that matters. Uh, so we're going to use the air ride. We're going to go up and down. And I expect it won't like it. But, you know, if you're, if you're from a northern climate, and I'm not. This is, this is like today is the coldest temperature Oklahoma has ever seen, I think. Or it's got to be close to it. This is insane. Uh, but if you're in a northern climate and you're considering the Ram and you want the air ride, but you don't know if it will hold up, hopefully this will help. And this, and, and I know it working once is not indicative of, you know, full fledged reliability, but this is not a new system. This is a close to 100,000 mile hard used system. I don't know if you guys have been following along, but part of my daily parking strategy is air ride all the way up fold the windows in, running boards out. Not to mention parking far away from anyone else and that kind of prevents door dings. That's like my armor, so to speak. Uh, and so I use the air ride every single day. And, you know, I, I lower it all the way down every time I hook up to a trailer. So it's used. So it's not extensive cold weather testing, but it is very cold and it's very used. So we'll see what it does. All right, so here's the moment of truth. Will it go down? It's going down. It's taking forever. Okay. Now let's go up. Four clicks for off-road two. Not hearing any unusual noises. Sorry if my heater is making a lot of a racket in the background. Everything is working just as usual so far. Dr. Dre would be so disappointed with how slow this thing comes up. It's taking a year. This is longer than usual. No, well, maybe not. Okay. It's like cold. Zero degrees? It says zero degrees. But if we look at the phone, oh my God, you guys know my password. It still says negative six. I am so sorry that I cannot focus a camera to save my life. I touched that camera to try to focus it. So it says still six degrees, or I'm sorry, negative six degrees. Zero, negative six. We know these truck thermometers aren't that accurate. It's just how it goes. Now I'm gonna put you guys outside and uh, take a look from the exterior.
Okay, so the air ride works. It's successful. I did try three or four times to put the camera outside on the tripod and go through the full range of motion up and down. And I could not get a seamless shot of that because every time I put my phone outside, even though it, it doesn't have a low battery, the phone would shut off because it was getting too cold. Uh, I think the longest it would record was like a minute, a little over a minute. And uh, so I couldn't get the full, fully lower, fully raised cycle in that amount of time. And that maybe that tells you something. My Apple iPhone cannot operate in these temperatures that the truck is fully capable of operating in, which is to be expected. But that is just kind of to discredit some of the naysayers out there that talk about the fragility of the air ride. I would say that based on what I've put it through, it's it's a reliable and accountable system. So yesterday, I shot the footage uh, of the truck and the air ride working like it should. I drove around a little bit, not a whole lot. Uh, for the most part, I just ran a couple errands and came back home. Like I mentioned, everything worked great until this morning. I thought I was done with the test. I get in the truck, I run to the gas station first thing this morning, and I see this. What? So I got a warning. I, I was in off-road two. I the gas station's not far from the house, and I wasn't going very fast, so I had just left it in off-road two. It was staying in it because I was I wasn't going above twenty some miles an hour. It's you know roads are covered in snow and ice, and I get that warning that it's lowering me from off-road two into off-road one to let the system cool down, and I thought that was odd. Anyway, I go about my business and I think to myself, what on earth could cause that? And then I'm heading home and I see it again. And it was really cold at the time. I think it was negative 10. And the only thing I could think of is perhaps the the compressor was overheating. And, and I guess that happened because anytime you have a sealed system, when the temperature drops, so does the pressure. And so the compressor has to work even harder to maintain the PSI requirement for off-road two, at least I guess. And while I was getting fuel, I noticed that the compressor was running. Like even I'd been parked for a minute and the compressor was running. So I think what happened was is the compressor literally couldn't keep up. It couldn't build up the pressure because it was too cold and it eventually did. And then when I drove again, I don't know why, why it, I guess it cooled off and then it had to build pressure again. Not sure. But that does give credence to the thought that it can be too cold for this. If you're driving around or if you're if you're in a constant state of negative 10 ambient air temperature, Fahrenheit, not Celsius, um, maybe this thing does have its limits. And I really wanted to give this thing a passing grade, but... You know, it did have a it did have a hiccup. So I think that's something to be mindful of and something to keep in mind if you're purchasing this. Now in Oklahoma, yes this morning was the only time in recorded Oklahoma history that it got as cold as it did, and it is the only time I've ever seen that message. So kind of fortuitous, I guess, that I got to see that when I did. Uh it is now up to five degrees ambient Fahrenheit. And it's, I've been driving around all afternoon and it's been working perfectly. So there is a line, there is a threshold that this thing won't operate like it should. So, you know, everything's got its limits and I found this one, which is fun to do. That's kind of, that's kind of why I'm here, you know, to figure out where, what the breaking point is or failure point. So keep that in mind. If you have any more questions, let me know. I think this will now conclude the test. And uh, as always, I appreciate you guys watching. Thanks. As I'm sure you've seen, Real Truck is the new sponsor for this season. They're going to be sending us some goodies to put a little pep in the old Dusty Dodge's step. But they don't just have Ram parts. They've got Chevy, Ford, Nissan, Toyota, you name it. Everything from wheels, tires, intakes, tunes. They even got the gooseneck hitch that I've got in the back. 
We'll leave a link to that in the description if you want to turn your half ton into a hot shot hauler or not, whichever, whatever you prefer. So head on over to realtruck.com, check it out for yourself, but keep me in mind if you see something over there that you think would go well with the old high mileage Ram, leave a comment down below. Let us know what you think would be a good install video and maybe we'll bring it to you. As always, thanks for watching.